right guys, it's Clay with Texas Know How again. Hey, we're going to do the back brakes on the Land Cruiser today. We did the front already, there's a video out there on that. I'll put a link down in the description for it, so in case you're working on the front, you'll be able to look at that video to get that done. But this one's going to be all about what we have to do for the back brakes. Now, on the 95, 96, and 97, they have disc brakes. There may be half the 95s that don't, they still got drums on the back, but I think that's the year that they switched over to where they have disc brakes as well. So that's what this video is all about. We're going to get the truck, we're going to jack up the truck and put these jack stands underneath the rear axle because uh, we don't want anything, you know, if we're yanking around, we're putting our head up underneath this fender well. We don't want any opportunity for this to crash. The other thing you'll notice, I've already got my tools here and we're also replacing the uh, OEMs with these EBC brakes. Now we did these on the front as well and I was real happy with them. Uh, this right here is the anti-vibration pads. Uh, so those shims are going to go in there to keep it from vibrating. It's got some things about break in here. Uh, but I wanted to show you these green pads, and they actually call them the green pads for this, this series or whatever. These are smaller than the front pads, and that's because the back wheels on any vehicle don't do as much braking as the front, as you all know that. So we got that. It also comes with a little bit of this lube. This is stuff that you can use, um, and I've got big bottles of it, but you can use that stuff to lube all the not on the pads where they actually make contact to the disc, but where they move on different mechanisms. And you'll see when we get this going, this is a floating um, caliper. So you'll see how those, those pads kind of float on some rods. We'll get into that when we, we get the wheel off. Uh, I wanted to show you that this is the, this is the hub. And, and uh, I want to talk about this for a minute because this is the disc brake. It's the, it's the drilled and, and uh, slotted, just like we put on the front from EBC. Um, but notice how big this part of the hub is. And the reason it's that way is because it's also a drum brake for the, the way the emergency brake works is it actually rubs in here like an old drum brake. So we've got all that stuff in here that's going to be looked at. We'll see if we need to replace it. Um, but if we don't, we're just going to put everything back together and these will be new on there. Um, it's probably a good idea to, if they're anywhere close to worn down, to replace those shoes in there as well because you've got a new surface here. Sure would be nice to go ahead and set them against some uh, some new shoes, okay? So uh, these are also vented, which helps with heat. You know, in the summer and you're running down a mountain road or something, you want these to dissipate heat. So that's what that is. Um, so I'm going to get with it, start jacking this up. Um, what I usually do is break all the lug nuts loose while it's on the ground. It makes it easier. They don't try to turn on you. And then I've got my floor jack under here. And I was going to lift one side at a time, but I think I'm just going to lift the entire back up and uh, we'll go from there. Now this tire is not up yet all the way because the, the differential on the rear end of the Land Cruisers is a little bit onto the right side of the vehicle. So it lifts this tire first. So what I'm going to do is just let it down on that jack stand. Hey, there's a little star. Come here, buddy. Come here. You need to stamp here. Yeah. Don't go running off. It's real nice today, so he's been trying to run off. We don't let him run around too much. He's so small. An eagle or something or a wolf or something could grab him for dinner. So we try to keep him up here with us. But he likes to be a hound dog run around. Something else I always put down is I've got a piece of cardboard. I'm going to slide underneath this work area because when you start getting into brakes, um, you probably won't get any fluid with this job because we're not going to break into the calipers. But you could um, get a lot of nasty grease from around this area on your concrete. Just kind of hard to get it off, so I usually put that cardboard down there. So there's that tire. See, I didn't really have to lift too much on it. I just had it right close to the ground. Put this one over here. Let him just hang out over there. That's a lot of meat. Now look here. This is the uh, this is the old hub. Looks a lot like that one I would have just showed you, but it's rustier. And the disc, and you can look, and there's quite a bit of a groove rubbed in here. So it's a good thing I'm replacing it. Um, and then here's that floating caliper I was telling you about. So the caliper actually bolts, but there's a floating part of it with the with the pads that. Um, well, anyway, I can describe it better when I start taking it apart. Damn what I'm talking about. Basically, that's what this is, a little drum brake. 
but instead of being hydraulically activated with a little cylinder in there, it's lever activated with your emergency brake cable right here. So, all right, the best way to start getting this off is just to lift the caliper off and suspend it. So there's two screws that hold that on, just like the front ones. I'm gonna get my safety glasses on and move my cardboard over. Put that there. If I catch anything, it might fall down. It's greasy or nasty. Get my trouble light hanging up right here so I can really see well. We'll get started. All right, one other thing I wanted to point out was I, I got these straight from the Toyota dealership, but these are your brake pad uh, positioning blocks. And they're made out of kind of spring steel because they're gonna basically hold on to something and then they give this flat surface for your brake pad to sit on. And that lets the brake pad kind of float because again, this is a floating system and so those pads actually have to slide on something slick. So this provides a really nice chromed kind of spring steel slick surface. And where they're at, as you can see one right here, that's a, that's a new one in my hand. And then there's one that's underneath this big, this piece of metal, there's one right here. And that pad's just inside this crack here running right here, that's actually right there, running and it can float in and out on these big pins. This whole mechanism here floats with those pads and that way it self adjusts on, on your disc. So it grabs with one piston because it just doesn't need a lot of strength on the back tires, don't do a lot of your braking. So it's that one piston pressurizes between this clamping surface and the piston and it center, centers itself really easy on the disc. So that's how these work. So you have to get some new of these, or you really probably won't. You know, they're just, they're just not going to be um, smooth and slick, and your brakes probably won't work the way they're supposed to unless you replace these at the same time. So you get a little kit of these. I don't know how much it costs. It wasn't much. It was like seven or eight bucks at the uh, dealership, and there's the part number there for it. So you're going to need those for the 95 through 97. Okay, so the thing we're going to do at this point is... Um, Instead of me taking the whole caliper off right now, I'm going to break these two uh, sliding pins loose on the back right here because it's holding the caliper for me. If I get it out in my hand and I'm trying not to break that hose and I'm trying to get that loose, I'll never break this loose. So I'm going to break this loose while it's on here. And then um, in order to, to get my, my disc off, I'm going to have to take the caliper off because this part's part of the fixed caliper right here. It goes all the way around. So I, I will eventually have to break that loose, pick up the whole caliper and move this off, but I want to break these loose first so I can disassemble the caliper without disconnecting the hydraulic line on the back. And it's real short. It, only, it just goes from right here to right here on a curve. So it's real short. Um, you're not going to have a lot of room to come out here and work on it. We work on it pretty much right here where it's at. Alright, I've got a, a breaker bar with a 17 millimeter on it. and. Uh, Remember, the first thing I'm going to do is break loose the uh, these uh, floating these floating pins. We call one the leading and one the I don't know what else, but both of them are like that. So I break that loose because once we get this caliper let go, it'd be hard to break that loose that's holding it in your hand. There it goes. Now that both of those are broke loose, we should be able just to take this caliper apart. Okay, see this pin? That's the one that's on top right here, which is actually the trailing one because this disc is coming around like this most of the time. Actually, it's the leading one, that's right. So this will be the leading one, the one that takes the disc first. So it's more of kind of a key. And you notice how there's there's greedy stuff in those uh, threads. We'll clean that up. We'll also clean this up really good right here. It's got some flat surfaces on it there. So we'll clean that up. It's got some lube on it. That's good. So whoever did this last did put a little bit of lube on that pin. Let's see if they get this other one. This one's not necessarily the any different in size or anything. Let's see. With those flat spots in there. So we'll clean all this really good. So, 
I don't want to put these in order, and that's the first one. This is the second one. I don't know that they're that any different, but I want to put them back. And then I'm going to lift my caliper up out of the saddle. And take it basically off the pads. So see that? There's the piston. And see how it's just kind of a big U? It goes on there, and there's a piston on this side, and these just two surfaces, you know, really. So I'm going to take something and push this back down, probably like a hammer handle or something to stick it in there. Push that back down. The best thing to do with this is just kind of put it right back here where it won't fall and don't kink your hose too much. You're able to take these pads out, by the way, once you get to this point. See, there's one. And see, I was right down, just about to hit metal here, but still pad, so I didn't get too crazy. I mean, I probably used everything I could use on that pad right there. So this is the one that goes next to the, the uh, piston. You can tell right there, that pad. You can see here where the pad's kicked away from the, the disc. I already took the back one off. It slid out. This one doesn't slide out as easy. It seems to be hitting. I'm gonna try to push, pull it on out of there, and come around here and get on this back bolt that holds this. So here, here are the two bolts that are holding that caliper on. Now these have tor torque specifications. I think they're like 76 foot pounds. So when we get this all cleaned up and we're putting it back, we are definitely going to have to um, abide by those torque specifications so this is all done properly. Um, it's amazing whenever I was growing up as a kid, I never owned a torque wrench. I never torqued anything right. I just probably over torqued a lot of stuff because I was worried it'd come off. So, you know, to factor in, I don't want it to come loose. I probably over tightened a lot of things and probably stretched the bolts. But, you know, I never, I didn't get, get hurt or anything, so I think everything held together pretty good. But, on this vehicle, I've started torquing things per the factory specs just to be a little bit more professional with it. Okay, now here's that saddle I was telling you about that uh and you can see here here's a little my kit's gonna have these that I can rebuild the caliper when I rebuild my calipers I can replace these little rubber things you don't have to it looks like that one's a little bit turned out like it it kind of got pressed in this one's out all the way around this was pressed in a little bit on the one on the top so I don't know if it'd keep water and dirt out of there as well now watch this is that last pad that was on the outside I'm just gonna come in with it and then down. And then here's those little pad seats that we're gonna replace with new ones because these are just really nasty. But there's that pad. So the outside pad, you can tell as this stops um, sliding as well and, and floating, the inside pad that's right against the piston does most of the braking instead of both of them because this thing can kind of float nice. So we really wanna, not this, this doesn't float actually. The, Again, the piston holding on to these pads in these grooves is what floats, or slides. So we'll clean this all up. We may even hit that with a little bit of paint just to clean it up. And we'll start reassembly. But right now, let's, let's pop this, this off here and see how, uh, how our brakes look on that for the uh, e-brake. The e so that hub came off, not too bad. You can see in here where that brake catches right there. And if you ever kind of start start driving with your e-brake on on these Land Cruisers, that's where it's rubbing. It's rubbing just like a an old uh, you know drum brake would. And these are these are pretty wore. These didn't get replaced last time. I think my front ones actually did. These did not. You can tell. 
So I'm gonna be replacing mine there. The outside edge right there is where those brake pads rub. And I'm looking at these pads, and you can get the you can get let these go all the way down to one millimeter, and they're fine. They're they're a lot more net. I'd say these are three millimeters on the back, and at the thinnest spot on the front, they're probably two point five uh, on there. At least two, but maybe two point five. So I've still got life in those. I'll probably just get some sandpaper and rough them up. Rough them up and get them ready to seat on the new hub. And we should be fine. I'll clean this up a little bit, but I'm even looking in here and seeing that these these springs and these um, clips that hold the uh, shoes in are still got some shine to them and stuff. So somebody has replaced these not not too awful long ago. So that's good to know. That's good. About to get after it. This is going to go back together pretty quick. And I'll do the other side. I'm looking right here at my, uh, there's, a, there's a sensor in here for your, so you can tell if this tire's slipping or spinning with your analog brake system and all that. And the sensor is pretty dirty, so I'm probably going to get a brush, a little nice toothbrush size brush and just brush that all off and try to clean it a little bit. Just do a little general cleanup in here so all this operates smooth. You want these brakes to kind of slide easy on their back plates. They've got, see how that moves, that's, that's okay. And you want that to be able to do that so it can center up in that hub when you put the e-brake on. You don't want to breathe too much of this dust. If you start really doing a lot of cleaning, be sure and put a mask on because um, I don't think they make any of these shoes out of asbestos anymore, but you wouldn't want to inhale any of that. So I think I'm going to be fine on those, but I am going to clean them up a little bit. They look pretty dusty in here. You don't really, you can use compressed air, but again, man, put on a mask if you're going to do it. This is that sensor. You see it at the end of my finger right there, and then these little, da -da 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 -da, that's your, that's the metal that flies past that sensor, and it's getting a pulse. This, this is all the little mechanisms of a regular old, you know, shoe brake system. There's the adjusting spur. Pushes them apart and gets them adjusted. This is the old one, this is the new one. And see, so you just snap them on. This comes in that kit. You just set it on that perch. Down that crack. Snap it on. And these are old ones will come off. Yeah. I'm going to take my brush and brush all this out, get that clean, and snap all these on. I'll be cleaning this up. I think I'm not going to rebuild these little shafts and the caliper and everything this time. I'm just going to replace these pads and the brake pads and put her back together this time. The caliper looks pretty good. These aren't too bad either. They're still real rubbery. So, should be good. There you go. So, I just took a wire wheel went over that real good. I was careful not to hurt these little rubber grommets. These are called dust shields. Just cleaned it up really good and then I put those new spring-loaded pad seats on there. Ready to go back on. Okay now I got that sensor right in there. Got it cleaned up and I took a little toothbrush and kind of cleaned those teeth and kept rotating the, you can rotate this if both tires are up off the ground. Um, 
the other tire since it's a differential the other tire just go the other way so just grab these grab these bolts right here and just rotate it and get your toothbrush right in here and ch -ch 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 -ch, just clean those teeth and then I shot it with a little bit of brake cleaner um, I just use this stuff just I think it's from I'm not sure which auto parts store but it's just a brake cleaner evaporates real fast I just kind of spray this stuff off get it clean before you start buttoning everything back up so um, the next thing I'm going to do is compress this piston because it's out because those pa as those pads wore down um, as they wore down this piston had to come further out of the out of the uh, caliper so now we need to push it back because we're going to have full thickness on our pads so there's a thing that we use we actually screw this thing in and you can see here that basically I need to get my light changed here for y'all but that goes in there this goes in here and then this goes behind there and in there and it and I'm gonna screw it and it's gonna push that piston in I'll get you on the tripod so you can see it but that's a good view of it right there as I turn this turn this screw I'm just gonna press that piston back into its cylinder bore and that's gonna push that's gonna push fluid back up through the hydraulic system so you got to make sure that your master cylinder has some room in it you're not completely full you might want to take a turkey baster and take a little bit out if you are completely full I left mine down it's at the minimum right now because I knew I was going to do a brake job last time I checked that I just didn't top it off because I knew I was going to push it back up so. I just wanted to show you that these discs right here are directional and if you look at this one if you get them mixed up or something when that thing is on the on the vehicle this would be on the right side looking at it. the reason why is because you want that swoop to kind of go where it would push things out of the disc if it's going this way it would tend to grab things and pull them inbound you want it to push them out when you're going forward so those little slots on there would push debris and water and whatever these little slots if it's going forward that water is going to hit hit that groove and go out so that's the way you want them to go when you put them on if you get mixed up doing some other stuff so right here I'm just going to take and rough up these pads just a little bit with the 220 just so they have a new surface to match, match up with my new drums well which are really my calipers I'm just roughing them up a little bit this isn't anything I can even go across see there I'm just cross half it see that now that pad or that brake shoe is not gonna Click on my new surface, it's going to actually be kind of rough and it'll bed in. You want them to bed. You want it to seat in. Now, I'm not taking a lot off that. I'm really kind of just removing old brake dirt. So you need to probably have a mask on. Don't do like me. But I'm just about ready to set my, my, uh, my disc back on. And, uh, I'm going to go back with the caliper, compress the caliper, put it on, button this side up, and go to the other side. See this little V right here? It's different than the rest of them. This little V, there's a hole. That's, can you see that? Yeah, there's a hole that's between two of the bolt holes up and up a little bit. That one goes right there on that V. right where it goes right there okay remember when I told you there was a V in it well here's that hole and what I was just going to show you you need to put this on with two two temporary lug nuts okay and that holds the disc and hub kind of flat against everything or against your spindle the reason why is you want to be able to turn this and you're going to have to feel I can't do it with one hand because I'm turning the other wheel just suspended in the air but you're going to feel when those pads 
when those pads are in there just locking up on this and then back them off and the way you adjust them is with a flat blade you're going to go in this hole and there's a star in there if you get under the star and lift up and push over the top you're tightening if you get on the star and you pull down on the star and push down on the bottom of it you're loosening so get it to where it locks it up and then back off a full turn on that star and then that's right where you want to be that way you don't have to use all the cable on your uh, emergency brake to get those to tighten up so your emergency brake handle will be a lot lower just wanted to show you that so now we're all set and we'll start to put the the caliper back on okay now I want to show you on these green pads see this pink stuff when it says break in coating it's real rough this is going to rub on here when we first start the, the start the breaking process and we're going to break in this pad to this disc that way so and remember directionally you want these to when you're going forward, they're fanning stuff out. They're shooting stuff out of the uh, pads. So these pads are exact mirror images of each other. So we don't have to worry too much about inner and outer with this set right here. So there's little dimples in the back. If these will stick on, right, it helps you position those, those little anti-vibration pads on here. So you want to make sure they're clean. I, I put on brand new gloves. And then uh, I'm just going to put this on. You don't hit a vibration plate on the outer pad. This one, we're putting this, these things on on both the outer and the inner pad. All right, here we go. Put this down. Look straight down on it. Once you touch it down, it's pretty much stuck. So you have to kind of make sure you're in those grooves these are little dimples right here that are in the that metal part of the brake pad as well as they're dented in from that little pad that helps whenever they get pressure on them stay in the right spot they don't ooze out you know all right so that sets ready to go you want this wall down here basically to have some in the caliper see that now that's ready to drop on and that's what we'll do next drop this in here one on each side of the disc like that we're getting there and then we're gonna put these bolts in which hold that down I'm gonna put these in dry and we're gonna torque them I did take a wire brush to them and clean them up. So they should torque okay. All right, guys, right here at this portion of the rebuild, there's another way to do this that I think I would do if I had to do it again. Um, I would probably put the two halves of the caliper back together off of the, off of the rig and then at that point lower everything down together onto the rig and bolt it up. So it just makes it easier to get the two pieces of the caliper together correctly. All right. So now you can see 
You got that surrounding the disc. Yeah. Didn't use much lube at this point. We'll use it on these bolts next. I'll put them right, right back in here holding the caliper. So let me get that part. All right, I'm torquing all this down. These little slip pins at the top, you tap, do them to 65. I'm doing the base ones that are holding the, the saddle bracket. I'm doing them to 75. came back to the top one to make sure it stayed. Now I'm going to back off to 65. Right there is 65. So I came off to 65. And now, first thing I'm going to do though is you need to see this. So here's the caliper. I'm going to go ahead and compress this. Hopefully you can see that. It's a deep little piston. It's in there. Kind of what you would consider upside down for a, a piston, but you have to realize the pressure is coming from the top, so the dome of the piston is actually inside there. We're up in, with this little thing, we're up inside the piston. So we'll just push and compress that piston back down. It just goes down, and it's pushing fluid back. That. I'm looking down here at how much I gotta get around. I probably should do it right there. So then I just back the pressure off. Get this little booger out of here. While that piston's not trying to come back on me, I'll set it on here. Alright, so now I've got this all put back together on the passenger side of the vehicle on the right rear that's what it looks like right there so I didn't paint my calipers red like I did on the 100 series I just kind of cleaned these up and put them back together like I said this isn't my show truck but I did get any kind of gunk off and cleaned it up and got some nice surfaces for those pads to slip on um, you can see the green pad in there you can see the anti-vibration thing there and you can see the new pad clips right there on the top too for it to slide on. If you look around here, that's the inspection window. Let me see if I can get the light over here where I can look in there with the camera. So yeah, you can see in there now in the inspection window about how much is left on that outer pad. And that's how those guys, that's how they look in there and see how much pad you got left when they inspect your car so uh, so anyway there you go that's that side I did I did torque these these uh, bolts here that are kind of the floating bolts for the for the caliper down to 65 foot pounds so make sure you do that everything should be clear back here you know your your uh, you shouldn't have any brakes or anything you inspect your your hydraulic line that comes over to the caliper it should be good and at this point you want to go look at your master cylinder and make sure that it's not too full because you pushed a lot of fluid back up into it when you push that piston in and then we'll move to the other side but uh, that's basically how you do the rear brakes on a Land Cruiser
All right, you want to be checking your master cylinder because we pushed that fluid back up here. And as you can see, I started with my level down on the minimum. So I actually, this is probably going to, when I do the, the uh, driver's side rear, I'm going to probably be right back up to max, which makes sense because in, the amount that's gone down is what you've worn on your pads unless you've got a leak somewhere. So if you put big pads back in, you should go back up to max. So anyway, I just wanted to remind you that you've got to keep checking this or you'll overflow it.